happened to uh, get a little bit of our background and kind of what we were doing. It, I, although I noticed we did this, I think it's 2019, so it needs to be updated. But but nonetheless, it'll give you the flavor of who we are. So yeah, uh, just, so. just click on there and share your screen, and then um, and we'll go from there. I can do that. I can do that. Well, thank you. You read that just uh, the way I wrote it, and uh, uh, the check is in the mail. Uh, <laughs> it, it, was, it was very well done. I appreciate it. It is a, a bit like your comment a few minutes ago. I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. So uh, uh, it's, 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 it's great to see you all here, um, and, I, I, and, I, and I look forward to working with you as we go, if we go forward. A uh, special hello to Dana, who was one of our colleagues once upon a time, helped, helped us build the land trust into what it is today. So that's a good thing, it's good to see you. Um, and great to see so many friends uh, all, all on, on the screen as well. So, so um, let me tell you a little bit about us and I will share the screen, I think, and let's see if I can do this and make it work. Um, if I do this correctly, let's see what happens. Um, and I'll go from there. Um, really, I'll, I'll give you, I think I'll, I'll run through this fairly quickly, if you don't mind. Uh, if you've got some questions, please don't hesitate to, to ask. Um, some of the material, like I said, is dated, uh, but, but um, everybody always likes to see pictures, uh, particularly of nature and, and what we're doing. And, and so uh, uh, every time I do a presentation and I don't have photos, people say something. So. Um, that, that I thought I'd better do something with this one. So a uh, little bit about the land trust itself. And yes, okay. Um, we're a not-for-profit 501c3 organization. We're community-based and uh, we're uh, dedicated to the permanent protection of and, and stewardship for the public benefit. So we do hold uh, right, well, I'll get into that in just a second, but we are up. We depend largely on contributions from private individuals. We do have, we are gaining more um, funding from the federal government uh, through the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Interior and the Department of Defense, actually. Um, and, and not only individually, but collectively. Uh, so we're beginning to pick up more federal money and we're doing okay on the state side. Um, and trying to get some of their funding as well to to to, uh, to acquire property, but that's that's what a land trust is 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 um, you know, in in our context. Land trusts up north uh, have a tendency to be uh, what some of us would refer to as land banks. You know, where people put money in and then and then they use it for housing developments later on. That's not generally what we do in the southeast. Uh, but in the Northeast, you'll find that occasionally. Um, we do purchase property. We do accept, we're, it's, it's, it's difficult, but we accept donations. And uh, of course we have uh, conservation needs. We do, unlike some uh, land trusts, we do accept easements as well, both in terms of purchase, in terms of uh, donation. Some land trusts will only do easements. Some only do land, uh, accept lands in fee, is the, uh, the real estate term. Um, uh, we do do both, uh, so that's a little bit different. The land trust, we are a member of the Land Trust Alliance, which is truly that, an alliance. It's not an association. It is uh, a very much an alliance of about 1,200 members. members. I think we're down to 1,000 now uh, because, particularly in the Northeast, land trusts were formed in individual communities. And as a result of just growth um, and um, mobility and a lot of and economics quite frankly uh, there's been a lot of mergers of, of land trusts particularly in the northeast um, we do share information uh, they do uh, our advocacy and uh, present some educational opportunities for all of us and then we also remember the alliance of florida land trusts uh, that represent i think it's now closer to 16 land trusts in florida um, there are about six that are very active, of which we are one. Um, uh, we're in the middle of a strategic planning process, a really good strategic planning process. And by that, I mean, probably one of the stronger ones I've seen in a long time. 
So our mission statement may be changing a little bit, but uh, and, and so will our operating area, um, but our founding stays the same. Um, but at, at, at the moment, uh, we, we do preserve the natural areas, historic places, and working lands of North Florida. Our operating area is currently 12 counties. We now go as far west as Lake City, as far south as Volusia, and we hold, we are active in Marion and uh, Lake County. It looks to us, or to me, uh, because we're at the end of our strategic planning process, that we'll probably um, drop from that 20 down to seven uh, and, and focus primarily on the first coast area um, just because, frankly, there is so much to do uh, in the first coast area that we're finding ourselves spread a little too thin. Um, so it's, 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 uh, it's one of those changes that is coming uh, that allow us to focus much better on the, what I, like I say, the, the first coast. So we'd, we'd have Baker, Clay, Duval, Flagler, Nassau, and Putnam, and St. John's. Um, and, and you're right in your comment earlier about Nassau County. Um, once people find out Nassau County has A-rated schools, and you can get from Nassau County into downtown Jacksonville in about 20 minutes, they're going to experience, I suspect, the same kind of growth that that, uh, that uh, uh, St. John's has over the last couple of years. So we're very much involved in, in, in Nassau County. We help them uh, create a, a conservation land acquisition management plan. Uh, they call it CLAM, which is kind of cute. Um, and uh, we're now in the middle of uh, putting together a volunteer board that'll look at projects up there and consider them for acquisition. Um, uh, they, it's interesting that they now have, it's interesting on both ends of our, of, of our, of our uh, service area. Nassau has a, has a plan, but no funding. They intend to put up a referendum in 2022 on their ballots. They intended to do it in 2020 got nervous and backed off, um, and so they, they've got no money. On the other hand, Volusia went forward with a funding uh, 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 referendum and, and it received a 75% approval, by the way. 75-25 was the vote in uh, Volusia County. So they have money and no plan. So it's, you can kind of see where we begin to fit. Um, we were founded in 1999 by Bill McClurkin, who some of you may remember from his Everbank days, but, but perhaps not. Um, we currently have uh, 11 uh, regular staff. We were up to 17, including three interns. Um, and we've been going through a little bit of a restructuring and trying to uh, be able to deliver um, our services across lines a little bit better. So we're, we're focused on some some oncoming things. So we are looking at, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think I need to really tell you much about this slide. I mean, you, this is, this is, uh, if, if you change the name to Sierra Club, you probably get the same, the same uh, items. I mean, it, it, it's, it's just everything that we do. Um, we, we constantly are making this issue. Uh, I, I will tell you particularly, I'm, I'm not sure where everybody's from. But one of the issues here about water supply, um, you'll note later that we do a lot of work in Clay and Putnam County, and we'll be doing more in Flagler. The reason for that and why it's important to you is that that's where our water supply comes from. Uh, it does not come from the St. John's River. It comes from the aquifer. And um, in order to get that, that aquifer uh, uh, restored, uh, recharged is the, is the term. Um, the only areas in North Florida um, are actually uh, those areas in Southern Clay, Putnam, and, uh, and uh, Western uh, Flagler that allow the water, the rainwater particularly, to seep, seep through the soil, be cleansed as it naturally would, and then go into the aquifer. Um, uh, Duval has small pockets where that happens, but not very many. For the most part, where we live in Duval and St. John's, the, and, and certainly in Nassau, uh, because of the nature of our soil, it just runs off into our creeks and rivers or, and streams and eventually into the rivers and out into the sea. So that's an important, very important part 
and very important part to those of us who live east of the river, uh, that there's still an interest in what we're doing outside um, or, or west of the river, I should say. So how do we decide which lands we're going to preserve? We look at a heat map. Now, this is unfortunately the old logo. I just saw that pop up. Uh, but uh, we looked at 26 natural resource factors. Uh, they're very similar to the same factors that were used in creating the Florida Wildlife Corridor, which I'll address in a minute. But, but nonetheless, uh, we, looked at, we looked at the 26 factors. We looked at what was happening with sea level rise and our, our, our uh, population growth uh, coming in the future and uh, developed a chart and a concept, a strategic conservation plan in 2014. We just applied for a grant to um, update this in 22. So we're looking for, uh, hopefully uh, we'll receive a little bit of money and be able to spend some resources on getting a new, uh, a new and more updated conservation plan because as you'll see in a minute, in a minute, some of the areas we identified are now lost to development, so we'll never get them back. Um, our prioritization criteria, you can, you can read, uh, uh, biodiversity was clearly a big part of it. Uh, uh, again, once again, water quality, both in terms of its preservation and restoration come in handy. Uh, we need to protect our farming community and our forest lands, and we want to produce public use and recreation. Uh, we do have one park open to the public. Actually, it's open 24-7, but 365, but we'd kind of like folks to come to come during the day. Uh, but, but nonetheless, it's, it's up on uh, Pumpkin Hill, and uh, it's got a great trail system and part of the Seven Creeks Preserve, so you can go up there. We're also currently working with Clay County. We acquired uh, 500 and, uh, 594 acres last year on the on Black Creek and uh, we are working with Clay County to create a, a public park, uh, turn that into a regional park for them. Uh, passive, by the way, uh, although it will have kayak, at least one kayak or canoe launch and or canoe launch um, and will have uh, uh, trails and probably have some kind of a a meeting area, and by that I mean probably some kind of pavilion, at least that's what our thinking is. They're handling the uh, uh, the capital, the infrastructure improvements, and we're doing the programming. So so that was our, our, our preservation portfolio that we've created, um, and, and you can see, maybe you can see on your screen, hopefully it's not too small, um, you can see where we identified uh, the areas that we're, we, we, we focused on based on the rating and ranking of those preservation priority areas, we identified 112,000 acres that should be protected based on those 26 criteria. I think this will give you a little better idea of what we were looking at. It'll also tell you which ones we've lost. Um, uh, I, if I move my screen, I'm wondering, yes. Okay, um, I was hoping that that would happen. Um, <clears throat> the, we're clearly still working on Black Creek very, very heavily. Uh, Black Hammock, uh, the, the, the owner up there, that's the only barrier island in Duval County that is not protected. Uh, that's uh, three of the other four are, uh, but Black Hammock remains unprotected, largely owned by a single owner. His price expectations are unfortunately too high. Uh, Crescent Lake, we're looking still very clearly closely. We're doing great work in the Ipnaya Greenway. Aguana River, we've done as much as we can do with the exception of the outpost, uh, which of course Gate owns or Gate Lands owns. Uh, Jerlington and Durban Creeks have pretty well been developed, as you know. Lofton Creek in Nassau County is developed. It's part of the wildlife uh, development. Uh, Long Branch, I'm not sure of. The Oklawaha, you know about. Um, the Ortega um, is one where we keep picking up little pieces of the, you know, the Ortega River, and so our, our holdings there are beginning to grow. Um, the Palm Coast buffer, uh, which is a word they don't like using, and, and a buffer is not, a growth buffer is not a good phrase in Palm Coast, uh, so we've changed that in more updated versions of this, um, but that's still very uh, much attainable for us. Uh, same with Putnam Lakes, we're very, very, uh, 
very active. Six Mile Creek we, in St. John's County, we've lost a development. That's a Hudson development that's taking place. The South Prong is St. Mary's. We're still looking very much at. We still have some opportunities in Western Nassau and Eastern Baker County. In the Tri-County Ag areas, of course, Southwest uh, St. John's um, and uh, uh, Clay and Putnam County. So we're, I'm sorry, uh, Flagler and Putnam County. So we're looking very much at protecting that area. You might find it kind of interesting if you look at the number of acres and then you look at what the ecosystem services value is. There is a value to carbon um, sequestration. There's a value to water. There's a value to um, all of the 26 items, frankly, uh, produce uh, produce an ecosystem benefit. If we, we, we calculated roughly based on uh, what we were looking at in 2014, we, uh, that was the cost of acquisition of those, those acres. Um, but the key here is we make the economic argument that the return on, on investment here is as short in some places as four months. Um, and as long as four is, is uh, uh, what's the longest one? 4.9, yeah, four years and nine months. So there is a return on investment for conservation if you want to make an economic argument. And that argument has begun to stick. Um, I had a conversation recently with Representative Renner, and he raised that argument with me. It's one of the arguments he made last year for funding the Florida Wildlife Corridor. So uh, that we're, it's beginning to register. Um, and every place I go, I try to talk about the economic. So that's a recount again of the, the, the areas that we were looking at. Uh, we continue to, with the exception of those that we've lost, unfortunately. Um, this number is now considerably different. We now have protected about 30,000 acres in total. Uh, we own about a little over 10,000. Um, we have then 20,000 e either under conservation easement, and I can't remember how many, I think we're now at 12 conservation easements, um, and we have facilitated. That's something else that some land trusts don't do, um, in, in, um, uh, in that we will help um, governments uh, or other entities buy property. Um, a private individual could, could, could be one of those, but in most cases, uh, the best example of that probably for those of you in St. Augustine is Fish Island, uh, a $6.5 million acquisition. Um, that we facilitated by, by negotiating both with the, it puts us frankly in the middle uh, between the developer on one end and uh, the division of state lands and we negotiated all of that deal did all the due diligence for it and got the parties together and were able to get it for 6.5 million. Um, uh, and, 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 and so that's a facilitated trade transaction because the state now owns it. The city's agreed to manage it. Uh, I believe the city has finished some of the, most of the work down there and it's now open to the public. So it's, um, it's a great opportunity, but that's what I mean by facilitated. This was one of the purchases that we made. Uh, the, the Spanish America, we call it a war fort. It's actually a battery or some would call it a gun emplacement. Um, we figured that most of the folks wouldn't know what a battery was. Uh, and so we called it the war fort. Um, it was a little under $400,000 and we raised that, bought it, and then turned it over to the National Park Service. So it's now an extension of the Timucuan Park Service. Um, it was, uh, as I understand it, and I'm trying to remember who told me, Charlie Bennett's aide uh, told me that he stood on that fort one day and cried because he had not drawn the line and he wanted to have included it in the park to begin with so it couldn't have fallen into private hands. Nonetheless, it did. And um, so that's what we ended up with. Um, we bought it from a private individual and then turned it over to NPS, so it's theirs now and they are managing it. Hopefully they're going to open it soon uh, for public uh, review, but it's pretty interesting. Um, the cannon from here could uh, shoot uh, three miles out offshore, uh, so it was a key point in defending Jacksonville. For those of you who are history buffs, Jacksonville was, we thought, was a target of the Spanish during the Spanish-American War. 
because uh, well, for lots of reasons. Uh, one is that Napoleon Bonaparte Broward, uh, who was sheriff of Duval at the time, was a gun runner and was running running guns down to uh, down to Cuba uh, to, to, for the for the freedom fighters. Um, and a large number of their exiles had come to, to come to Jacksonville, and uh, the U.S. had put about twenty thousand troops in Jacksonville to uh, prepare for uh, uh, invading and capturing and eventually freeing Cuba. Uh, they never went, by the way, for your knowledge, the group out of Tampa did, landed on the west side of, of, of Cuba and marched across and the Spanish quickly surrendered. And the folks here in town didn't particularly like that because they didn't get to go to war. And so they actually rioted in the streets um, and had to be put down according to the history books. I'm not quite sure what that means, but, but I'll let you imagine. Um, so um, this is an example of one of our properties. If you go up uh, Big Talbot Island and you're crossing over uh, the what used to be uh, the George Crady Bridge, uh, now the bridge that, that spans uh, the Nassau Sound uh, over onto Amelia Island, uh, you will find uh, the Chuck parcel, which is now part of uh, Big Talbot Island. Uh, we are in the process of selling this parcel and, and all of our holdings actually on Big Talbot Island to the state uh, parks system. They need housing for their uh, rangers um, and uh, they would be logical stewards of this land in the long run and fulfill the, the uh, bequest we received from Diane Joy Milam Dennis, um, and, uh, and that was her goal: was for us to acquire all the privately owned land on Big Talbot Island and convey it to the state. So we're in the process of doing that, even as we speak. Um, we do hold, I said, conservation easements. This happens to be Ben and Luann Williams, who own property down in uh, uh, Putnam County. They now own, I want to say, they've got about 3,600 acres. I would encourage you, I'm trying to remember the name of their website. Um, and I can't, um, but if you were to Google it, you sh in, in fact, if you send me a note, I'll be glad to get you the, they do education and tours and are really, and, and, and are doing a wonderful job with the management of their property. Um, they do timber some of it, but they also are planting longleaf pine um and, uh, and 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 really doing some great work this property is right along uh the water management district's property uh along the creek down there so it's a uh, this is uh huge and they're huge supporters I'm, I'm not supposed to announce this so i'm assuming there's no media on the on the call but uh, but, but uh, these folks are will be named the uh, tree farmer of the year for the state of florida and uh, by the american tree uh, by the American Tree Association. Um, so that'll come up in the near future. Uh, he's already, uh, they've already been named, I believe, the American or Florida's um, Farmer of the Year. So it's a, uh, they're, they're wonderful people. If you get a chance and you really want an earful, go down and visit them. Um, Luann, by the way, uh, uh, regularly kills the wild boar or the pigs that are on her property and, uh, and, and dresses them in the field, field dresses them and hauls them to the truck and puts them in there and brings them to the house. Well, so I, I keep wondering what Ben does, but, but in any event, it's, it's a, and I kid him about that on a regular basis, but nonetheless, uh, conservation easements remain, are, are very simple. They, they, uh, uh, it, 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 it the, the landowner gives up his rights to development in return for either a tax donation or for cash, depending on whether we're buying it or he's donating it. Um, and the, and, but the land ownership remains in his hands or her hands, and they can do what they want under the restrictions of the conservation easement. But that land can never be developed uh, because the, our easements are in perpetuity. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, when you look at the Florida Wildlife Corridor Act, this is the intention of the state legislature is not that they, we buy so much land 
as much as they want to see more uh, easements placed on property to conserve it, but leave it in private ownership. Um, we're working with, with, with that and it seems to be going well. Um, I'll give you an example of what it looks like in St. Johns County. Uh, there we talked a little bit about the outpost and, um, and what we're looking at. So it's, uh, but you can see water quality improvements and, and flood retention, uh, uh, the ecosystem benefits of services here. So you can get your money back. This is the longest uh, return on your investment from an economic development standpoint. But we have since, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but uh, the piece along A1A that comes down towards the J, uh, all the way down to Michler's, including that corner at Michler's and, A and A1A, we now own all of that property. We've purchased that from the Van Winkles and uh, a gentleman from uh, St. Augustine, whose name escapes me at the moment, but we now own all of this property. And uh, so it's, 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 a, it's a big win for us, leaving us only with the outpost to worry about. Although that's plenty. Uh, Jillington Durban Creek, make the same argument about 1.5 months. Um, what, what it'll look like. Um, you can find all of this on our website. Six Mile, as I told you, we lost because of development. I don't remember the name of the development that's going in, but I do know it's a Hudson development. Um, we are working with other, um, this one is really kind of um, out of date and, I'll, and I'll, hopefully in a minute I'll show you, but, but you can see that, that the hashed areas are the Florida Forever project areas so we can get access to state funds. Uh, the green is already preserved or conserved. Uh, we, uh, we identified our and read our, our, our preservation part for portfolio areas. So you can see we're trying to get more uh, connectivity. I know that was always a phrase, a favorite phrase of Representative Stevenson. In this case, we're talking about wildlife rather than bicycles or cars. Uh, so it's pretty cool that we're doing stewardship. We do manage their land. Um, we have back issues of landscapes. There, there are fewer volunteer opportunities at the moment, um, but for a couple of reasons, we're working on some really sensitive land, and I'll explain that in a minute. But um, and, and as a result, we're doing fewer events and outing, particularly in the summertime. But where this is spring, as the fall picks up and into winter, I suspect that'll pick up. Um, partnerships abound. We're now in a partnership on the O to O, the O. -K -O. A, a landscape initiative to connect the Ocala to Osceola National Forest. Um, and I'll show you that in just a minute as well, but you can kind of see how we reach out and communicate. We are on Facebook. Uh, you can welcome to follow us. You can subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, uh, we do send out e-alerts when it's important and all those things. So uh, we generally only have one big event a year, and that's our annual meeting. Uh, we obviously didn't have it in 2020, or we did have it in 2020, just before the, the, the COVID hit. Uh, in fact, I think we're one of the last events. Uh, we did it on February 5th, and then uh, everything closed. We have not run it in 21, and I doubt we will. We'll probably wait till the spring of 23. Uh, and so we're beginning planning on that. Um, and that really kind of sums it up. This is... Um, trying to think of where this is, um, but I do want to take a moment to tell you that um, current projects that we're undertaking um, in, in include um, the acquisition of land at American Beach and Amelia Island. American Beach, as you probably know, is an historically, um, uh, I actually, the right word is black uh, rather than African-American uh, beach. In fact, it was the only beach I, I th we always we've been saying it's the only beach in, in, in the southeast. As we learned, there were three in Florida alone, um, but uh, this was the only one. There was one in uh, St. Augustine, actually, and his name just went up, Butler, Butler Beach in in St. Augustine. Uh, there was one in Daytona, and there was in, in American Beach in, in Jacksonville. Jacksonville's was extremely popular, particularly for people from throughout the southeast because of its location. Uh, it also housed a place called the Rendezvous, 
which was a, a restaurant bar where folks like Ray Charles and Cab Calloway and um, Billy Holiday and those folks performed. And so it's a historic value as well. Um, it is on, it's, uh, our, the property that we're looking at uh, contains bluffs. Um, yes, we have bluffs in Florida. In fact, the largest ones are on Amelia Island, our um, big Nana dunes, and, and uh, we're looking at little Nana dune. Our dunes are about 35 feet high, theirs are about 45. Um, but uh, they're the largest dune system we have in, in, in the area. Um, let me see if I can share one more picture with you, if I can find it. Uh, why isn't it popping up? Uh, figures, just my luck. Uh, <laughs> I was looking for another map, um, but it's not there. So, um, but I really do want to show that to you. So can you just bear with me a moment, if you would, and I'll find out where it went. Um, hmm. I don't see it. Um, let's see if I can pull it quickly. Um, let's see if I can. Um, no, that's not going to work. Uh, I thought I had pulled it up. I just wanted to be sure it was here. We'll escape this. I'll close that. You probably can see all this and um, probably think I've lost my mind. But um, I don't see it. And I don't know why it wouldn't show. Um, I'm going to go. Oh, I know why. <laughs> um, I'm going to find it here. Um, we are very big on um, perfects. Let's see if this will work. Um, actually, I'm going to show you that, and I'm going to show you the other one. See how, see how good I do on this technology stuff. Um, where am I? I'm back here. So I need to go here. Now I need to go here. And I can go here. This is, uh, we were talking earlier about um, the connection between the, the O to O. You can see exactly what we're looking at. The Ocala National Forest is to the south. The Osceola National Forest to the north. In the middle of the big dark green space is Camp Landing. And you can see that we're already becoming effective at connecting the southern part of Camp Landing south towards Ocala National Forest. The yellow area between the Osceola National Forest and Camp Landing is actually owned by one owner as Weyerhaeuser. And we are in negotiations with Weyerhaeuser They've agreed to have an easement placed on their property, um, but it's early in the game because we haven't come up with a price yet that both parties find acceptable. Uh, hard to imagine, I'm sure, as you can imagine. But, but nonetheless, uh, it, it is where it is. And so if we are successful, they literally own this entire piece, which would connect the, the Osceola to Camp Landing and would continue to work around Camp Landing. Uh, in addition to this, um, I, I did pull up the wrong one. No, I didn't. Um, yeah, I did. So in addition, the uh, Florida Wild, that the Ocala to Osceola National Forest is part of the, the, uh, uh, the Florida Wildlife Corridor. Um, it, that received uh, 400, yeah, that doesn't show, well, it does. Can you still see my screen and see the Florida Wildlife Corridor? You can, I hope. Yes. Okay. Um, it's in green, really, down towards uh, the Everglades, and it comes all the way up. It weaves through here. But nonetheless, um, the state legislature put $400 million into, uh, I'm sorry, $300 million in, in last year's budget for acquisitions of property inside the Florida Wildlife Corridor. That includes the Ocala to Osceola uh, Wildlife Corridor. Um, we are uh, 
what we've determined so far is that they're going to continue to put that money into Florida forever areas within the Florida Wildlife Corridor. So that'll be the selection process. So we're very familiar with that process. Uh, we're working on it. And quite frankly, um, we'd like to broaden the Florida Wildlife Corridor a bit. One of the reasons is that, and you can't see it on this map or most maps, um, it, it literally cuts out almost all of St. John's County. Um, that doesn't make sense to us. Uh, and, and, and it cuts out all of Nassau, as you can really tell, even on this map, it cuts out all of, uh, of Nassau. We are in the process of, of asking the legislature to go to priority four. Um, that, that's a model that uh, Tom, Tom Hopter, who you may be familiar with and his work at the University of Florida, but this is his, his model. Um, if you go to priority four, you bring in St. John's and you bring in Nassau County. Um, at the same time, you also bring down some property, you bring in some property closer to the Tampa area where the speak, current speaker um, resides. So we're hoping that that appeals to him a great deal. So we're, we're trying to get it to, floor, to priority four, amend the act to, to include priority four. Uh, but that's one of the things we're working on currently. So it's, so we are um, very active in the ODO. Uh, we've got, we, uh, as you may or may not know, we've been trying to buy the small islands that are at uh, JTB in the intercoastal in the north east corner. Um, we'll have an announcement about that probably in the next week, uh, maybe maybe two, uh, depending on just different things, but but uh, we'll have an announcement about that as, as well. Um, it is big for us to continue to uh, protect our military and, 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 and allow for military readiness. That's what Camp Landing does. It's, as you probably may know, it's a joint training center. <clears throat> and uh, it has an increasing uh, mission, uh, particularly as, as uh, some of the space programs are ramping up. So we're very much interested in acquiring property around Camp Landing to protect them uh, and from encroachment by housing developments uh, and allow them to train to their borders. If they, if they have face encroachment, they retreat within their borders, it limits their ability to uh, uh, fulfill their training mission. So there's a national security implication. Um, so we're very big on ACUB and ACUB funding that flows through the, to, that's the joint program between Interior Agriculture and DOD. We've been very good at cobbling together money from various places that's a good example but we're now the uh, we now have a contract with them we are also about to be named uh, as a partner with the city of jacksonville on protecting the navy naval bases particularly at mayport which is suffering uh, significant uh, uh, what's the word i'd look for uh, damage really from uh, from uh, uh, sea level rise uh, Unbeknownst to, I mean, without very much fanfare at all, uh, both Republican and Democrat nominee, uh, 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 presidents have been funding the, the raising of peers all over the world. Um, and, and despite public comments about the, 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 the non-existence of global warming or the non-existence of sea level rise, they've been raising the Navy's peers. Um, and there's a reason for that. And, and um, and, and so we've been, uh, we're, we're about to get on board with that and help them with the, with their situation. We are the the, the folks that buy swamp land in Florida. Uh, we uh, uh, there's value to it, significant value. That's where fisheries are. That's where fish go when they're in danger. Manatee find uh, uh, shelter there. Perhaps more importantly. Uh, and one of the arguments we're beginning to make very heavily that seems to be getting some traction is that um, an, acre, a health, an acre of healthy marsh grass holds a million to a million and a half gallons of flood water. Um, in addition to that, it also takes out the uh, storm surge, the, the power from the storm surge. Uh, so it's tremendously important that we protect our, our salt marsh grasses, our, our, our marshlands, our swamps, if you will. Um, 
swamps were described to me by uh, our former chairman of the board as, as the nature's kidneys. Um, and, and, and so we, because it cleanses it as, as, as it goes off into the ocean, or, I'm sorry, often in this particular property, off into the water, into the St. John's. Um, but, uh, but, but marsh grasses are really uh, not only economic or, or economic in terms of the fisheries, but they're also economic in terms of the prevention of flood. Um, and we're working very hard with a, a number of different folks uh, to trying to get more to understand the significance of that, getting insurance companies to understand the significance of that, um, and getting them to you know just just kind of get, get on board with. If we really think at the moment, our, our, our thought process is that, that uh, hopefully if we can convince them of more um, uh, economic impacts from the insurance and mortgage company or mortgage companies that uh, we'll be able to uh, stall some of this further development. But, uh, but uh, you know, we'll see where that goes. I think, suspect that's a long fight. So what can you do? Um, uh, so I, I guess it really comes down to spreading the word, uh, talking about what we do. Uh, I, I think we have a pretty good PR uh, firm uh, that, that uh, is doing an incredible job for us. Um, and uh, anytime, anytime you make a cover of, of the business journal and then have a four page spread on the inside, two of which were a picture, but two of which were substantive issues about what we're facing, uh, that's, that's, that's huge. But there's a limited readership obviously in the business journal, but we're hoping that more companies, uh, more associations, more groups, more partners um, will all come on board with us. Um, and, and, and help us reach our goal. Um, and when I talked about the OTO, I should have said that uh, we have 21 partners in the OTO currently. Uh, they include public entities as well as private entities. Uh, so it's a, it's a big partnership for us. And probably right now our flagship uh, project, we're trying to acquire uh, in holding in the Osceola National Forest. Um, that's a little bit more of a trick since the, 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 the uh, the price tag on that's about four and a half million. Um, that would certainly be our largest by four of our acquisition. Um, so we're, we're uh, I, I, I don't see that. I mean, I, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. That's one of those things we're currently working on. So we continue to work throughout the, the, the region. Uh, if you know of properties, you can tell us about them. Easiest to send us an email with the parcel numbers on them. Um, I will tell you, uh, particularly if you're looking at easements, that uh, the IRS seems to have a threshold of about 40 acres. Uh, under 40 acres, they tend to, uh, to audit. Uh, we, we don't want our clients being audited. Uh, so uh, 40 acres seems to be the minimum amount. Um, in terms of acquisitions of properties, it, it really does depend, particularly um, it's particularly important if it's adjacent to some other conservation land. Um, American Beach, for example, is only, I think, a total of 1.3 acres, but it's adjacent to national park uh, land and, and, and uh, in the county park. Yeah, county park. Um, so it's, it, it's important that the adjacency becomes an issue. So we look at each project differently uh, and, and, and decide internally how to go about it. Then we use the land committee. Uh, which is made up of our board members uh, who, who vote on whether or not to proceed. And then our board uh, authorizes us to go forward or it tells us to stop. So uh, we've been very fortunate to have uh, some support from some new um, foundations, the uh, EJK Foundation, which is part of the Knobloch family. And some of you may be familiar with them. Uh, they're out of Houston, if I recall correctly. Um, and uh, uh, they've, they've come on board recently. Uh, Jennifer Johnson, of course, through the River Branch Foundation, continues to be very supportive of our activities. So that's been wonderful. Um, and a number of other people have continued in, in, in foundations. But we're always looking for more uh, because now we find ourselves in a race. Uh, it's a race for money and it's, and it's a race for time uh, because of development. Uh, there's some projections do say that du Duval County will be built out in 2030, 2040 at the latest. Um, 
and and uh, uh, St. John's. Those of you who live in St. John's know that what's what's happening here. And uh, Nassau, if you, it, uh, the development has now jumped over 95, and they're now developing west of 95. Uh, so they're, they're pretty much everything east of 95 is now developed, um, or it will be soon. Um, and now they jumped over the interstate. Um, people are moving from, uh, I'm sorry, not moving. Um, folks are commuting now from southern St. John's County into Flagler. Uh, that probably would indicate some further growth in, down in the Flagler County area. Um, Clay County is about to explode with the, uh, with the, the, the development of the First Coast Expressway. Um, uh, that's just going to be an economic boom to them. And it's going to be huge. Uh, in, in, uh, we recently met with them to discuss a conservation plan. They want a conservation plan in, in, in Clay County to go along with their growth plan. So, um, you know, I, 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 like I say, going back to the question of what can you do, uh, obviously it's a, it, it, it is about communications and information. As, as we have opportunities to do things, we'd love to have you participate. We'd love to have you involved. We'd love to have you volunteer, your folks volunteer. Um, and those opportunities will come up, I think, in the next few months. Um, and we'll be soon, I suspect, looking for some new employees, some additional employees as we need to grow our staff uh, to meet the growing demand. So we are developing uh, gopher tortoise we, we are restoring gopher tortoise habitat for example in clay and putnam um, we are uh, restoring longleaf pine uh, the property i mentioned that was in holding in the osceola national forest is the largest stand of unprotected longleaf pine in the south in the southeast um, and and uh, so it's very important to us to be able to do that hopefully we'll figure out how to how to make the money work um, but that's really what we've got. So I encourage you to stay in touch and, and, and follow what we're doing. And if you happen to have a dollar or two or a nickels or whatever, well, precious gems, no firstborn children. We don't do that. Um, but if you've got uh, opportunities uh, uh, or, or know of folks who are interested, know folks, if you know folks who have hunt camps or fishing camps that are, would be interested and willing to put a conservation easement on their property, um, that, that's that, that's great for us. Um, if you know of folks who are in the estate planning business and are interested in helping with uh, uh, with uh, 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 and have property to deal with, we're one of the one of the not for profits that would be glad to handle it land. I know most not for profits shy away from it. Uh, we do not. We welcome it. And I'll close with that one example, actually, and give you that to kind of mull over. Um, years ago, um, in fact, right after I came on board, uh, we were approached by a, a, an engineer who was, had been diagnosed terminally ill with cancer. Um, he was given four months to live. Uh, he uh, uh, was, as I said, he was an engineer, so we sat down and figured out his value of his estate and figured out it was $6.2 million. Uh, at the time, the threshold for the estate tax was $5 million. Uh, he wanted to know the value of a uh, a donated conservation easement. It happened to be 1.4 million. Uh, so he donated a conservation easement on his property in Nassau County, um, and his estate dropped the value dropped to 4.8 million. And his wife did not have to pay the estate taxes. Um, now, right now, I think the estate tax is up to um, I want to say it's 18 million, but one of you may know better than I. But but nonetheless. We do understand that Mr. Biden intends to lower it back to $5 million. Um, we also understand that uh, he, he may be looking at uh, taxing, uh, increasing the capital gains tax on, uh, on uh, appreciated stock. Uh, we do accept appreciated stock or stock donations, and therefore you can avoid the, the, uh, the, the tax on it. So all of that is kind of... Uh, 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 I won't say a nutshell because I just looked at the clock and realized how long I've been talking. So, um, but it's the it's it's uh, we're, we're we have an incredibly talented team um, that is just dedicated to this and and and, and they are really really good at it. Um, and I get the opportunity to just kind of um, 
every now and then make a quote in a news news release about something that they've done. So it's a it's a great organization, and, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to a lot of activity in the future. So, can I ask a, a quick question? Certainly. And that's uh, actually it's sort of two of them unrelated. One is I was real curious with that idea of the uh, return on investment. And I wondered if you could explain, I didn't quite understand how that translated into, you know, like profits or stuff. And then the other one, what's the overall budget of the North Florida Land Trust? Well, I'll do the latter one first. Uh, they, without acquisitions, uh, our, our operating budget's about 2.3 million. Uh, in 2021, it's uh, 2.3 million. Um, and then in addition to that, we probably acquire in 21, we'll probably acquire nine, eight, eight to $10 million worth of property. Uh, so that's not on budget, but our operating budget is about 2.3 million. Um, the ecosystem benefits comes from the cost of the land acquisition on one hand to the economic, to the ecosystem benefits you gain on the other. So if you divide one into the other, you end up with a return on your investment. So the ecosystem benefits, as I mentioned, are things like, uh, believe it or not, they get into uh, uh, the, the value of clean air, and you can actually measure that, or there are folks who can value the clearing air, or carbon sequestration, <coughs> which reminds me before I forget, uh, there's some recent studies that indicate that salt marsh grasses actually retain uh, more carbon than trees do. Um, and so there's a whole interest now in that. But does that answer your question, Robert? If you took a look at the, if you take a look at our website, I think it'll walk you through it a little bit. Yeah, better. I will, and it, that clears it up a lot. I just couldn't see the economic <coughs> benefit, but you, I mean, especially the clean air idea certainly does help. Yeah, clean air, timber. Um, uh, there is wildlife wildlife viewing in, in uh, Florida is a four billion dollar a year business. <coughs> um, so it's, it's quite quite large. So there's, and, and so wildlife viewing comes into play. Um, there are a number of economic benefits and obviously fisheries, clams, oysters, you know, all those things. Uh, we were hoping, uh, one of the ideas we had at one point was to try to restore oyster oysters to Big Talbot Island. Uh, and, but that takes a lot of work in terms of uh, water quality testing. So we're, or that's still on a back burner, but, but it may come to the surface. Our biggest challenge, quite frankly, is how do we stay focused? How do we stay focused on doing what we do? And, 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 and there's so many great ideas out there and so many great projects. But. Jim, could I uh, make a, a little announcement that we're having a hike to uh, one of your properties on Sunday cool. uh, in Debogie Creek? Yeah. Uh, starting at nine o'clock. Uh, so people can go to the meetup site and uh, read all about it and sign up. That's cool. Yeah, Bogey was the park I was talking about up on Pumpkin Hill. It's also part of the Seven Creeks Preserve. Right. Uh, we just acquired a, a few, what a, well, I'm trying to remember how many acres it was, but we just acquired the, the missing link that connects all of the Seven Creeks, or the, with all of the Seven Preserves. Uh, we haven't done the preserve, the, the trail yet through there, but we're, we're, we're working on that. And, uh, but Bogey Creek is a great place to go. Um, it's, it's, it does have, uh, it, it, it does have, it it, we, uh, we have it up and running. We should have, uh, if you take your smartphone with you, you should be able to, um, you'll have different places where you can go, where you can, uh, uh scan something that will identify what that is that you're looking at the plant the, the animal the tree the whatever it might be and uh, a couple of our interns over the last two years have put that together so it's really an educational piece too so and it's a short walk very short walk well it's about what is it a mile i think uh it's it's, it's not very far so it's a it's a good introductory walk so. it's 77 acres 77 acres Candice, did you have a question? Yeah, I had a question. Um, well, um, the Beach Marine um, area in Jack's Beach was purchased by Windward Marine. And um, you mentioned that you were looking at projects near um, JTB and some islands. And I was just wondering, I attended a meeting 
um, Jack Speech City Council meeting. And the, most of that area, there's a big chunk of that area that's marshland. And I think it's in conservation easements now, and there's a bird refuge in there. And how, how do we, do we go ahead and just contact your organization? Um, you can, but, we talked to that developer at one point. Um, uh, um, there's several things going through my mind. The answer to your question is yes, you can reach out to our organization. Okay. And, 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 and we'll be glad to help. I, I think you're talking about the property that used to be Beach Marine or North of yes, Beach Marine. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Um, we've talked to the developer up there and there were, we haven't talked to him in a while that I know of, but, but meaning the last couple of months, but there was talk that he was gonna donate some of that land to us. Um, I'm not sure that there's an existing easement on it. And, and that would be something that I would start with to be okay. sure that there is an existing easement. Because if, frankly, if there is, it is less attractive to us because it's already conserved, depending that's, on the terms of the easement. Um, so that's, yeah, that's what the city planner referred to. And she said there was a bird sanctuary back in there also. So if it's already in conservation easement, then they can't build right. on it, correct? That's correct, but the, the planner may have been talking about an easement, meaning an access or, or right of way. Uh, so sometimes that term is used uh, for different purposes. So if he was talking about uh, th that type of easement, then we would be very interested in that project. Um, okay. We were with them for a while. We, we weren't real, as you can imagine, we were a little skeptical about getting well, if you'll pardon the expression about getting into bed with a developer that mm -hmm. would then use our name to um, to promote his development by saying that we're going to do X, Y, Z with NFLT. Um, and, and, and so we're, we're, we're kind of a little gun shy, you know, and, and we want to be sure what we get out of it. So we're being right. very cautious, but, but we are very much aware. Yeah. I, and I, he he did say, they did say that during the meeting that they had contacted the North Florida Land Trust and it was all a negotiation and all this. And so, yeah, that's, okay. what I thought. that's kind of what I thought. I will tell you that we're going to talk to the city of Jacksonville Beach about the small islands, those north of Butler, because okay. they back into Cradle Creek. In fact, we just uh, turned, we just acquired property south of Cradle Creek that we would like the city of Jacksonville Beach to either take ownership of or uh, manage. And so we, we talked to the city about that and expanding Cradle Creek Preserve uh, to the south. Okay, well, I'll start doing homework on the easement in there and cool. with the yeah. city. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you, no, no, no problem. Other, other questions for Jim? Well, one thing I wanted to bring up and just, I took a couple of notes about ways that we could get involved and just tell me if I, missed any um one was get the word out and that's certainly something that our members can do and we can try to help with uh to volunteer when the opportunities come available and i think you will be maybe informing us about those opportunities right. to as possible identify parcels and potential pos parcels to be protected but get the parcel numbers to you so that you can be very specific, is that right? That's that's correct. An, okay. an address might work, but a parcel number is better. But an address will, will okay. help. And if if people do have money or things that they can donate, that would be welcomed, I'm sure. sure. And also be mindful of estate plans. That if you know someone who's entering into an estate planning process where properties might be involved to maybe refer them to the land trust. Um, any other things that I missed? Oh, no, those are, that's a really great summary. I had to take you every place I go. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. This is, has been just an absolutely wonderful presentation. I think everybody is in agreement that we learned something from, from this and it's very helpful to us in our efforts to um, promote land preservation and um, 
keep us informed and we in turn will try to do the same for you so that we can have as much as we can a collaborative relationship. So That's I true. want to say thank you again, Jim, and thanks to all of you for coming out tonight and participating in this event and hope you all have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank Good night, you. Everybody. My pleasure. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. And Trish, you had a question? Oh, I think someone answered it. Thanks. No, Chris had okay. a question. Chris had a question about the resiliency committee. Yes. 